the woman of the moment, Christine O'Donnell, Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate, and uh, the only reason, apparently, that Saturday Night Live has a show, because, the other, <laughs> I mean, they, right, Christine, if you cease it's to exist, a, they would go out of business tomorrow. I don't think they'd have anything oh to cover. Oh, my goodness, yeah. It, 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 it's almost to the point where you, you just got to laugh. But, Laura, I thank you so much for playing that audio clip, because, you know, when, when my team and I got in the car and headed back to the office, we were literally high-fiving each other. Because I followed up later on saying, can you name, Chris, the five powers or five freedoms guaranteed to us by the First Amendment? I was in, and he couldn't. He sat there stumped, and all he kept saying was separation of church and state. And I was like, you cannot name the five freedoms protected by the First Amendment. And uh, so we're high-fiving each other, thinking we expose that he does not know the First Amendment. Ha, ha, ha. An hour later... The AP report comes out with the exact opposite spin. We were all stunned because I really thought that everybody was in on the joke, that everybody, as they heard Chris saying, yes, it's in the First Amendment, and, you know, that that they were in on the joke that he does not know the First Amendment. I could not believe it when the AP reported it that way. And it just showed showed their, their ignorance of the Constitution as well. Well, I think, again, uh, as someone who you know, spent my three years at University of Virginia Law School, it's it's not surprising at all uh, for me to hear uh, a bunch of law students in a room uh, ooing and eyeing and <gasps> gasping when you said what you said because they're indoctrinated to believe the exact opposite in their con law classes, their constitutional law classes. They're, they're meant to think that the Constitution is a piece of silly putty meant to be stretched and, and twisted and, 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 and stamped down uh, is, is in any way that a liberal activist sees fit. You know, stretch the words, stretch the meaning to hell what the original framers believed. It's about what we believe today it means. So that's a constant debate in, in law schools. And so that didn't that didn't surprise me at all. But, Christine, I, I want to talk to you about uh, where we are right now in, in politics in the United States, because for some reason, this race in Delaware has has absolutely engendered. Uh, enormous amounts of bile and bitterness on the left and the right. People on the right continue to demean you, I think, and dismiss you uh, and, and say, oh, yes, this was an unserious candidacy and she's not serious. She doesn't work hard. She doesn't study hard. Um, why do you think that is? Well, first of all, I think it's because what we're doing is shining a spotlight on the problems in Washington and the problems in Washington are that we have strayed from the Constitution. Both parties have started to cater to the special interest group as opposed to the interests of their constituents. So my whole candidacy is about putting the political power back into the hands of the people, demanding that the Constitution be a litmus test by which every elected official in Washington cast their vote. My opponent actually stated in his remarks in a debate today, he said, Christine thinks the power of the federal government could be limited to what's in the Constitution. My jaw just dropped. I was like, that's my campaign message. And you're saying it as if it's a bad thing. And he was saying it is a bad thing. And I couldn't believe that he was campaigning as if demanding that the federal government rein in out of control spending, pull back their overreaching arm, and stick to the enumerated powers as laid out in the Constitution is anything that anyone other than a bearded Marxist would, would want. What do you think of Karl Rove? Well, I hope that he's beginning to change his tone because uh, we've gone up in the polls um, about 10 points right after the debate. I think the two debates that we had this week will continue to have my campaign rise in the polls. And what we have proven is that without the party support on the national level, without our party support on the local level, we have some county leaders who are working very hard for us. But in terms of the party apparatus, where the Democratic equivalent is pulling out all the stops to make sure, you know, that my opponent uh, is is going strong, without the help of the typical party establishment, we are gaining support and gaining in the polls. And I hope that that will show Carl Rove the true power of this candidacy and the true validity of this candidacy, because I believe that we can win the more we talk about the issues the more we address the concerns that are on every voter's mind, they see that there is a clear choice. My opponent thinks that the Constitution is an indispensable document. He couldn't name the first five freedoms in the First Amendment. He has a history of raising taxes.
active? He actually said, Laurie, in that debate where, unfortunately, the Constitution's not uh, nominated yeah. the national members, because he actually said, when asked to justify raising taxes on low-income seniors and low-income disabled residents, he said it's because they're taking advantage of our system. They're moving right. to New Central County to take advantage of our low property taxes. Like, that's a bad thing. Like, bringing yeah. in but, consumers, you know, but, selling but, homes. Yeah. That's Christina, yeah. the, 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 I got a couple things I got to get to because I, the, I know you're looking at some polls that are showing something, but most of what I'm looking at is still a double digit lead for Chris Coons. I, I, I think he is woefully, uh, inadequate and, and a horrible idea for the people of Delaware. He's a far left activist. He would be another a vote for cap and tax. He'd be another vote for whatever Obama wants to do. It's, it's ludicrous to think that he would be the right answer for the state. But let me tell you what Karl Rove said specifically about about the Tea Party movement, and I think that you are encompassed in this. He said the following. If you look underneath the surface of the Tea Party movement, on the other hand, you'll find that it's not sophisticated. This is what he said to Spie- Der Spiegel. It's not like these people have read the economist von Hayek. Rather, these, people who are, uh, these are people who are deeply concerned about what they see happening to their country, particularly when it comes to spending deficits, debt, and health care. Last time I checked, uh, Von Hayek's Road to Serfdom was one of the top-selling books in the United States. But uh, Karl Rove still has a bee in his bonnet, clearly, about people like you. Right, absolutely. And I, I, hate, I you know, just love the way they say these people. But what people have to realize is, yes, the Tea Party endorsed me, but so have many Hillary Democrats. They actually started an organization called Democrats for O'Donnell because we have a broad coalition of support that it stands beyond the Republican Party because no one can afford these tax increases. Everybody wants to see the federal government return to the powers uh, of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to see the regulation roll back. I consistently say that a vote for my opponent will cost the average Delaware family $10,000. He's trying to weasel his way out of it, but there's no denying it. With these tax hikes that are coming in January... With his vote on cap and trade, that'll probably no, it's just ridiculous. To go up no, no, it's dollars. Yeah, that, that, well, let's, we, you know, let's, let's just move on to the young people for a moment, because on ABC on Sunday, a, a self-described representative of 20-somethings said this about you, Christine. I speak as a 26-year-old woman, and my problem is that no matter what, Christine O'Donnell is making a mockery of running for public office. She has no real history, no real success in any kind of business. And what that sends to my generation is one day you can just wake up and run for Senate, no matter how lack of experience you have. No matter how lack of experience you have, Christine, care to respond to uh, the next William F. Buckley, uh, Megan McCain? <laughs> well, I don't think uh, Megan McCain is the next William F. Buckley. And if I oh, responded to what shucks. every blogger said, but I, I do want to address the issue of experience because I've got over 10 years' experience working in Washington, D.C. I've done enough experience to know what happens when Washington gives over to the special interest group. But I have enough experience in the real world to know how Washington should work. Today, my opponent called me a Washington insider. So which is it? Do I not have experience or do I have too much Washington experience? It's actually a good point. Yeah, whatever's politically expedient for for them at the time. And and that's a shame. I do want to inspire the young people that you don't have to be groomed for office. You don't have to be handpicked by the party elite. If you have a commitment to serve the needs of your constituents and you're willing to sacrifice your life, your fortune, your sacred honor. If you're willing to put it all on the line and stand up in the face of having your reputation being slandered and everything you say taken out of context, have your family put in the spotlight. If you are willing to make the sacrifices necessary to serve your country in elected office to get our country back on track, then by all means, that's the message I want to send to the next generation because we need more citizen politicians serving in our state capitals and in our nation's capitals. I Christine, think that, that is a great thing. Christine O'Donnell uh, on the Laura Ingram Show.